Bună seara, dobri vecer, good evening. Uh, I will speak from here just for technical reasons so that our online participants can also follow us. Uh, hello, Elizabeth. Uh, tonight we continue with the public program of the Eduard 2020 project. And uh, we will uh, hear a presentation by Elizabeth Koftak, who is a researcher and cultural activist based in Minsk in Belarus and who generously accepted our invitation to travel during this difficult period uh, to Kishinev. Uh, so we are very thankful to her for being with us here uh, and who will speak about the uh, art and the uh, politics or the rather the uh, relation between art and politics in the Belarusian context. Uh, Elizabeth is not is visiting us not just for this presentation she will be coordinating a workshop actually a seminar two seminars uh, dedicated to the Soviet heritage dedicated to the way we perceive ourselves through visual means and represent ourselves through visual means uh, next two days on Friday and Saturday so if you are with us and you are willing to join just let us know we are still open for and accepting the new participants So, uh, Elizabeth, uh, you're, uh, you're free to take over and uh, we have about one and a half hours. You can, uh, I think it's good if we keep some time for discussion, but you, you have enough time for your lecture. I think there is also some reason not only discuss to uh, not only discuss uh, what's happening in the art field, but also maybe how it's how it's uh, unfolding in general. Uh, so you already know who I am, uh, and I think we can proceed now already to the presentation. Therefore, I'm going to switch this screen to my presentation, so you're going to be able to see me and the presentation, and those who are listening online would be only seeing the presentation and he hearing my voice. And I think it's going to be like this. One, two, three. No, it's not here. Ah, because I haven't uh, shared my screen. Sorry. Uh, so the presentation I'm about to give today. Just a second, sorry. Uh, it's about the artistic response uh, to the revolution pro uh, process, I would say, what's happening in my country, in Belarus. And uh, I would like to discuss today uh, how it affected the art field and what sort of artistic responses are created by the activists and also so uh, I think I'm going to even cover it's written as <laughs> I would say that what is distinct to call art field in Belarus is that it's not what I'm making very Input, but it's also about not their creativity and that dictatorship falls. Uh, but what I'm talking about today, I'm just trying. <laughs> and you know, it's also like uh, to give some sort of framework on the COVID 19 situation in Belarus. Uh, as you know, and basically that's why I would say the revolution started to unfold and the protest began. Uh, began. It's not only about that people were so. Uh, so disgusted by uh, the government, but also uh, it was mostly a reaction to how the government and Lukashenko personally uh, reacted to the COVID-19 situation. Because, for example, I'm sitting here only without masks because we have this social distance uh, between us, or actual physical distance between us. I hope there is no social distance, actually. <laughs> and uh, 
uh, in Belarus, you wouldn't be obliged to wear a mask. It would be a choice. And uh, the government basically failed the whole situation and people were blamed for dying. And the president was telling that, oh, we don't need the quarantine, we don't need lockdown, because uh, not because we cannot bear it economically. It's more about, maybe can, we can change the laptop. Or uh, if you have it, uh, I just can send it to I you. Could, uh, open it from my yeah, maybe like this. But Let's make a one minute break. It's okay, so yeah. Uh, 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 so we need to make a technical break because it's just not streaming for some reason. I really think that this KGB uh, <laughs> interval. <laughs> Involving up. Should I stop my uh, my screening or not? Mm -hmm. Application window. А если я открою, я же сейчас все закрыла. Смотри, 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 что мы сделаем? Что мне придется тогда это переделывать? Вот его открою. Угу. Тут такого ничего не было. Не, ну это будет только хром. Mm -hmm. А тут раньше было такое что-то еще. Mm -hmm. Ну так это вот она есть. Дай секундочку еще. Размеш. Это не что было. Только что видела его. Пробуй это прикольно. Mm -hmm. Еще просто вот это типа. Mm -hmm. Если я открою из этого. Нет, ничего. Mm -hmm. Так что скидываем. А кто еще будет? Будет. О, это сложно. Я скидываю, но она не скидывается. О, пошло, пошло, пошло. Сейчас будет. Окей, okay, so you're going to open this on the screen, the screen, and I'm going to uh, open my computer. So I'm gonna navigate and. Sorry. Uh, and can you check if you, yes, I think people can, and maybe if I stop sharing my screen.
Yeah, it's gonna be. So, okay, perhaps you're going to figure out with this, with the presentation itself, and they're going to continue talking about the arts field in Belarus and all this situation, because we actually don't need to, perhaps people would like to see me as on the main screen <laughs> while I'm talking without the presentation. It's going to be a bit better than just a black screen. Uh, so yeah, I will open it just for myself. As you know, like in school, you have to be very uh, And I would say that the political uh, processes which are happening now is basically the result not of an economic uh, decay or something, or uh, just a reaction to people demanding some sort of uh, respect uh, of their human rights, respect of their dignity. And that's started to form as a response uh, to the neglect to the COVID-19 situation from the government. And uh, talking in the first part of this presentation, I'm going to focus not only on the protests, but more on how the art field and the cultural scene is uh, uh, formed and what sort of uh, connection exists between uh, governmental or state-owned institutions uh, in the art field and independent artists, so independent cultural institutions, institutions private galleries and what sort of challenges and opportunities we have uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this weird country of mine. <laughs> uh, on, the, on the one hand, people are quite, uh, at least like there are a lot of people in Belarus, we're talking about 9 million people, and of course, even if it's not the huge percent of them, but there are enough people who are artists who are involved in the cultural scene, who are involved in the independent uh, uh, movements and activism, but still there are challenges uh, as people always faced during this uh, 26 years of the Lukashenko's regime. They face some sort of limitations and challenges so regarding the freedom of speech and the freedom of artistic expression. And you should not imagine that if you're an artist, someone would come uh, would come to you directly. Usually it's not what's happening. For example, if you're making an exhibition, uh, it's not going to be you who is suffering, usually in most of the cases. Of course, there are some extreme things and what's happening now also to some artists is uh, just another example of it. Uh, the problem is that uh, the institution would face some uh, restrictions and no one would explain to you directly that you're making a politically engaged art, therefore you shouldn't be exhibited. It's not going to be about this. No one is going to name the real reason for this sort of artistic persecution. Uh, people are going to come to the venue and say, you know, you have some problem, the electricity is not working right, uh, right now, and you have to and you understand, or some sanitary uh, uh, sort of conditions are not facing our, uh, our expectations. So we're going to close you down. But everyone understands that it's not about actual, like the state of the venue. It could be a, a barely, per uh, like almost perfect. Oh, you see the slides, right? Uh, can you switch to the next one, please? Next one. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Can we make it full screen, please? Mm -hmm. It's going to be prettier. I've made some efforts so the slides would look good. Not this one, but the others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one. Thank you, Asha. Okay, so uh, and that's the sort. Uh, it was the condition, uh, especially for those people who are involved in the third sector and the, uh, or in 
culture and arts uh, sort of living like in a crystal cube or glass cube because we know this in uh, discrimination theory we have this uh, glass ceiling when uh, you know there is the limit you're going to face but no one will tell you directly you cannot do this because you're a woman or a black guy or whatever and the same thing is in Belarus but it's not only the ceiling it's basically the surrounding and that leads to some sort of uh, constant self-censorship because if you want to be active in or if you want it to be before this summer if you wanted to be active in this field you had to restrict yourself and try to guess what sort of uh, what sort of art would fit and wouldn't be a problem for the government and what sort of art is going to be uh, banned basically from from being exhibited and since uh, the government has like a lot of influence uh, on the, those who own buildings, basically the government owns most of the buildings in the big cities. And even if you're in the independent gallery and for the galleries, what we want is not just like newly built spaces, but it's more sort of uh, old factories or something. And they're all owned by the government. And it's very easy to manipulate uh manipulate this uh mm, this uh, galleries uh, to influence the artists and uh, we also have to know that it's uh, the belarusian art market and uh, actually i wouldn't even say it uh, i call it uh, as it's of a market it's more like a scene uh, with uh, uh which tries to find the balance between between the state-owned institutions and the private galleries, and um, the, basically the artists, uh, those who work with uh, critical art and contemporary art, they're all try to be out uh, to be outside of this system, and it's not um, it's not like someone else. There are only a few curators and after, uh, actors, uh, I mean, artists, sorry, uh, cultural actors uh, who are employed or in a close collaboration with the state-owned institutions. Mostly people try to st stay away from there and we call it like uh, living in a cultural ghetto because uh, you have to be like, not only you know your limits in your art and in your art artistic and cultural expressions, but also uh, you are actually get high, uh, ghettoized, or how do you pronounce it, uh, to the inside of the institutions and spaces which offer you this uh, uh, this sort of uh, simulation of freedom inside of a very repressive system, and that was basically the main thing. Can we switch to not to the next, but uh, one and the next one? Okay, yep, and the other one. Yep. It's not fitting the, uh, the whole screen. Go to the full screen for the browser, please. I mean, here it's full screen, but not up, 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 up. No, it doesn't work like this. Okay. Okay, so uh, I also wanted to show you what was happening in, in the critical art and uh, critical art, uh, art which is working with the uh, for, which is working with the political topics, uh, and that's the, from the art group uh, called Lipovic Sviat. Lipovic Sviat, it's a, what do you call it? Like in Romanian, you call it pay, but how it's in English? Yeah, no one knows. Linden in, <laughs> in German, sorry. So it's basically a flower, a flower of a tree. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this icons it's called icons for people and you see Lukashenko and his son who doesn't actually have a mother and we had a joke that he gave birth by himself and uh, also a minor and uh, the hockey player and the uh, riot police uh, in the helmet like on the lower uh, lower right one yeah and uh, so they were trying to talk about like what sort of uh, uh, images uh, the government and the Lukashenko regime sells to the people like what supports this uh, uh, facade of, uh, of the beautiful and very stable country uh, and it's for me it's quite interesting if you scroll a bit up so we can see the minor because when the protest started minors uh, were basically on the avant-garde of, uh, of the Belarusian protest this year and they declared before the elections that we're going on strike if, uh, if Lukashenko wins. And it's quite interesting that they basically 
Uh, and also a lot of hockey players did the same. They basically transfer, uh, transferred these years from being like sort of uh, uh, pillars of the regime to being in the opposition. And we're going to the next, next example. Uh, it's a uh, Belarusian artist living in uh, Berlin, Magdalena Pushkina, and she has been criticizing a lot the official culture of Belarus and her art. Uh, the upper work is called the uh, tr uh, Presidential Tribune, and it, it, all of these works are uh, perhaps, uh, yeah. I think the TV sets also. They were exhibited in in Berlin and other German cities, and uh, she wouldn't be able to have like very direct, like a lot of very direct uh, artistic expressions inside of Belarus. And she's residing in Berlin. And we were talking about the previous examples. The leader of this uh, artistic group uh, is living in Moscow. So if we're talking about some, uh, and you wouldn't perhaps even call it hardcore. But that's not sort of art uh, which could be exhibited in galleries and galleries or museums or in public space, uh, unless it's uh, some sort of uh, uh, st hooligan street art, which is not, which is, which is done in night or something. Uh, so the artists which are more critical, they're usually living abroad. Uh, therefore, they cannot be influenced by the KGB, and no one is going to. Uh, talk to them saying like, sorry, we cannot do it. And there are a lot of cases when uh, in the group exhibitions, the artistic works are excluded from them just because they don't meet the self-censorship of the institution. It's not like people from KGB come all the time and say, no, 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 nothing, no games with politics, please. It's more about, uh, it's more about the rules which people follow even if they don't believe in them. Oh, used to follow at least. Uh, and we're going to the next one. Uh, and what happens when something is more, uh, more, uh, more critical and more direct? Uh, it's not exactly. It's more like journalistic photos. Uh, it's uh, it was the catalog of uh, Belarus uh, press uh, press photo 2011. Uh, which was basically arrested when it was because it was printed abroad because it's not possible to print uh, in Belarus some sort of first we don't have uh, a lot of uh, typographies which are going to produce uh, the quality good enough and secondly most of them would be afraid to work with something political and so there were pictures from the protests in 2010 and these pictures were considered to be an extremist and the people who printed it were very persecuted. They were not arrested in the end, but they had a lot of tension. And uh, the whole series was just banned from, uh, from uh, being published and sold in Belarus. And it's just a case how everything, like you, it's basically the extremist pictures I'm showing now. So you cannot like just show these sort of things. And it wasn't a lot of much hardcore things going on. Uh, or another example, uh, the next slide, please. Yeah, that's the central, uh, central square of, of Minsk, of Belarus. It's very iconic now when the protests are going on. Uh, usually it was like a place for in 2006 and 2010, people were gathering there, but now there is for some symbolical reason, I'm very afraid that people are going to be there. So when there are protests all over the means, like actually like thousands of hundreds, uh, hundreds of thousands of people uh, are going on the streets and here you're going to see uh, everything, uh, just the barriers and the militarians watching so no one is going to be on the street. And uh, like, he's quite well known and very prominent uh, uh, Larsen artist uh, who works uh, not only with the visual arts but also with a lot of his performances. Mikhail Gulin. Uh, he tried basically to uh, challenge this uh, this system in which people cannot do some sort of artistic expressions, uh, and he done this installation of geometric who used around six years ago, he just installed it. And he was telling after the, all this happened that like you don't have any rules uh, in Belarusian law that you cannot expose geometric objects on the main square of Minsk. But what happened after they installed it, uh, the right police, Amon, 
uh, they beat, uh, they've beaten uh, the volunteer who was helping uh, him to install these cubes. And that was basically, actually their reaction, I would say, was the final aim of this, uh, of this uh, installation, because it was more like an actionism, uh, which in, had to involve the police and their reaction to it. Because uh, they, firstly, they cannot, uh, they cannot say that you're not allowed to do this. Even the colors are not, not politically charged in colors. And it's pink and yellow. Uh, but still there are uh, restrictions which are unwritten. And uh, the artists, uh, those who want to work with critical topics, uh, always face this sort of... Uh, 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 sort of uh, restrictions and violent uh, uh, actions. So it's not only about this year then that uh, the police uh, started beating people or killing people suddenly. It's been happening all the time, but uh, until this year, it was more about uh, art activists or political activists, environmental activists. So it was very narrow group of people who were suffering from the regime. And now it's much broader. And if we're going to the next slide, it's also a performance by Mikhail Gulin that's called The Territory of Protest. And what he was, uh, it was from uh, 2014, I would say. Mm. Uh, he went to outside of Minsk uh, to the field and the, uh, he's walking with a guy. And then uh, when they reached like the middle of it, the guy beat it a sort of a small pole with the chain and Mikhail Gulin was going in circles like you know like a horse would do having this limit that he cannot actually protest and also he was holding so it's more like a performance but it's a video performance because you wouldn't be able to uh, to observe it and that's what's basically the sort of uh, state of uh, critical art field in Belarus uh, you can be critical and you can go much further, but then you have to get out from the public space, basically, and go to the forest and perhaps make a video performance, because you wouldn't be able to do the same on the street, you would be arrested for doing this, although it's like, you cannot read any political message which like uh, the general public would understand before this year, because it's nothing is written there, and uh, he's not getting any violent, he doesn't undress himself. Uh, like uh, Alexei Kuzminich did this year, for example. Uh, but I haven't included his uh, his example, unfortunately, to this presentation. But perhaps we're going to talk about this later. Okay, next, next, next. And this one, uh, that's the very old one. It's uh, almost like 20, uh, 21 year ago happened. Uh, the artist uh, Alice Pushkin. Uh, it was his uh, action called the gift to the president for a fruitful five-year work. So it's been 21 years ago. So we suffered from Lukashenko for two decades after this. And that's basically a barrel with a call, filled with horse sheet, a call sheet. I'm not sure what sort of sheet it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a portrait of a portrait of Lukashenko with the village fork in his uh, uh, stuck in his face. And uh, that was the critic of the results from the first uh, uh, first term of uh, Lukashenko being a president. And that's basically the most, uh, I would say, one of the most famous abroad, especially abroad, uh, artistic actions happening in a public space, and also the most acute, because uh, it's pretty much direct and violent. And of course, he's been arrested for doing this. And so, uh, like 20 years later, uh, Alias Pushkin had made. Can we move to the next one? Uh, he had a, another inter intervention to the public space. Uh, it was against uh, Russification and integration with Russia. And uh, this time, 20 years later, he'd done it not in the center of the city, because that was you know, the previous one was uh, near the presidential residency of the, at that time. Now Lukashenko moved to a nicer place. Uh, that's somewhere on the city limits uh, near the grocery shop. And he's criticizing basically Putin, not Lukashenko. And anyway, he'd been detained for doing this. So he was violently arrested just near the shop on the city limits uh, for 
uh, exhibiting these sort uh, these uh, these posters. Uh, so it shouldn't be only about Lukashenko. No sort of very direct and uh, um, provocative artistic reaction was involved in the public space until this year. Can we move to the next slide, please? Yep, and the next one. <laughs> yeah, because this one is one of the marches. It, uh, it was uh, Lukashenko's birthday. He turned 66, uh, uh, was on Sunday on August uh, 31. And these people, as far as I know, these people are not the artists. Uh, and the idea of this march was to uh, celebrate Lukashenko's birthday and to give him presents. And you can see what sort of presents people are bringing. It's a coffin and a car crouch. Actually, car crouch is one of the uh, powerful message from the pre-election period, because one of the, uh, uh, I would call him presidential candidate, also he, uh, although because of the Lukashenko, he couldn't, basically his wife uh, won the elections. Uh, and Alexander Tikhonovsky, or oh, Sergei Tikhonovsky, I'm sorry, uh, he had the, um, I uh, had this image of car crouch. The Lukashenko is a car crouch, and we're going to have a sleeper and uh, hit him. Uh, so we're not going to have this uh, regime and this uh, oppressive car crouch in our country. And people made a huge car crouch where it was actually quite uh, uh, quite powerful the image. Uh, and that sort of artistic expressions, uh, people people who are not directly involved in their artistic field are bringing to the public sphere and public spaces of means. And that's just one of the examples, just because uh, if uh, even last year, Alice Pushkin was detained for basically very uh, not not that critical and not violent and pain and facing all these persecutions and now people are basically doing whatever they want some some of them of course still face some sort of fines or they can be detained but uh you can be detained and being fined for doing nothing as well so it's not not a big problem and basically it uh, empowers artistic expressions and i will need to say maximum next slide please uh, that uh, okay, this one. Uh, the protests haven't started straight after the presidential elections. Basically, the protests started uh, in the mid June, and uh, they started with the firstly with the arrest of the collection of the gallery, private gallery, uh, which was initiated by one of the presidential candidates, uh, Viktor Pobariko. Uh, they mm, they basically arrested all the pictures. That part of the of the slide, you can see uh, that they actually and the, all the pictures which have been bought and, sold and bought by the bank initiated and the process of buying, uh, collecting this collection of uh, Belarusian visual art. Um, they basically arrested the collection and the gallery ended up having uh, empty walls and they still cannot uh, exhibit anything. And they, actually that's, that will, will, since it was so unfair and so uh, unexplainable to people, people their artistic part of Uh, of this against this uh, act of basically vandalism because uh, uh, people who had the access to their and uh, the most uh, thing was original from Belarus and uh, so basically she looks like the the part with the given a finger but she's not given a finger obviously in the area original and there was a array of re the reconsiderations of this uh, image and 
uh, since the mid June, this one. of the symbols of the program and the uh, and do like something is happening in the political field we cannot just see how people who are funding this are to the gallery being closed down for political reasons and she invited artists to stand near the places where the pictures originally been exhibited with the uh, printouts of, uh, of, this in, of these pictures, of these paintings. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Nadia Sayapin a bit later because we're going to talk about uh, another performance. So done by her and I think we're switching to the next slide. Uh, yeah, and basically we are moving closer to the main thing I would like to talk about uh, uh, this evening is uh, the role of these artistic expressions. Because uh, 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 we had a slide with this boom. And actually for uh, Belarus, uh, this situation, which is quite uh, traumatic and violent, it became a a uh, source of inspiration for the artists and also for the public to uh, create some sort of uh, uh, responses, mostly visual responses, but uh, of course there are uh, also audio and video and theatrical responses to this, but this evening I'm going to focus on the visual art and, uh, mm, and also uh, about the role of it. And I would say the, the main things which these uh, artistic expressions uh, um, do, it's uh, the documentation of what's happening. Even some picture you would say, oh, so would see that some, some of the pictures are basically repetitions of what's been photographed on the protests, some acts of violence or maybe some very inspirational uh, inspirational gestures, uh, uh, so it just settles in the people's mind because they are constantly repeated also in different forms, in different uh, uh, in visions of, from different artists, and also inspirations. Because uh, with these uh, images, we not only motivate people to continue continue going out to, to the streets and being part of the protest, uh, but also but also uh, celebrating our heroes of this uh, revolution and protest. And also since the things are quite traumatic and very scare, scary, because uh, it's not only about like you're going to the protest so you know that you might be detained or even beaten or killed. Uh, it's more like he, at some point uh, people were avoiding and still it's visible in Minsk that people are avoiding going out in, in the night because uh, some, there were a lot of cases when people just went out to, uh, to the grocery shop and they've been detained and beaten and uh, suffered a lot from this. So it's not only about uh, a decision to, to participate. Sometimes you're not making a decision, but you're a victim of this. So, oh, this machine, let's see. So, so perhaps let's move to the next slide. And... Uh, I would perhaps focus in this part on the um, on the reconciliation protest, uh, process. Because uh, can you scroll a bit down? Because it's like about admitting the crime. No, no, I mean, like, oh, sorry. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah. So the first thing we have to do when we are dealing with this revolution and protests, and when we're trying to foster it with arts, uh, it's uh, to admit the crimes. And there are people who are avoiding looking at the news and looking on all these reports. And then we are uh, reproducing the images. And some of them are purely, uh, purely artistic and basically are 
just like images and working with what's happening. But for example, uh, the upper one with the uh, lots of red police and demand. So it's basically a reproduction, like painting made on the uh, from the real pictures uh, photograph. And there was a series of, uh, of these sort of images. Another one, unfortunately, you cannot see it perhaps with an open book. Uh, it's a book on anatomy, uh, and so uh, basically it's an art object from uh, Yelena Gile, uh, and she's uh, talking, it's written of 150, and 150 is the official number of people who've been tortured in Belarus this summer. And uh, so it's just drawing attention to, the, um, to what's happening. And also the lower layer, uh, that's more about that that's what's happening is violent and that's uh, that's not done for the political reasons because for example it's because like you know we have this riot police who's uh, doing these uh, awful things and their main motivation is because they're having very good uh, work conditions they're paid a lot they have an apartment uh, from the government or a very nice loan percentage or something and for this they're basically that's their main motivation so we're not talking about the fanatics we're talking about people who are paid to do this to people and, uh, and the stickers on the trash beans uh, it's written that it's a it's a bean for uh for your votes in the elections and the other one it's uh, the bean for uh complaints for for the tortures and violence from the police and that's uh, those stickers you can see like, pretty much not everywhere but in many places in Minsk at some point of course everything which you do in the public space is going to be uh, erased or painted over quite quite rapidly and uh, it's not only about the visual next one please uh, visual images which are mostly uh, distributed uh, through uh, through Instagram and their uh, mass media and uh, the online websites which are uh, collecting all the artistic responses uh, from the from the local artists, but it's also in the public space. And there are two performances uh, which happened in August. And in August, you could have, you could have a lot of uh, freedom uh, after the violent wave came to an end. Uh, it was a period when when you actually could do do a performance do anything go with the flag uh and he wouldn't be persecuted or arrested for this and now it's uh, going a bit uh, harder and uh, people are sometimes arrested and detained for uh when doing some sort of political or artistic expressions uh, in the public space and the first one on to the left uh, it's called the art of the regime it's also hmm, uh, so basically, the artists were invited to stand near the gallery, which, uh, who, which whose color, like the collection of this gallery was arrested uh, because uh, it, I was talking about this uh, because it was connected to the uh, uh, cultural activities, and uh, also it's near the Palace of Arts. And the uh, Palace of Arts is a uh, quite a unique place because it's supposed to be uh, the official uh, huge gallery of the official uh, artist union. Uh, but since uh, they have to pay for the pay for the building, uh, it's not only exhibitions and may, uh, mostly it's not known for the exhibitions, but for the uh, so, some sort of fairs where people sell honey and fur coats and some sort of Indian stuff and of course the, uh, those people who are involved in the cultural sector but do not belong to this artistic union they, they negotiate a lot this problem of the, basically one of the main artistic places for the exhibitions in the country is basically uh, exploited for very capitalist and very ugly things so it's uh, on the, uh, near the entrance, and so people were showing the pictures of people who were beaten in the beginning of August after the presidential elections, and like there were artists and also people were drawing something, but it's not depicted here. So it's more about like admitting and uh, sharing the information about these crimes done to the people, because uh, it has to be it has to be vis uh, visible, it has to be negotiated. To 
for the next things in this process to happen. And uh, another action or performance, um, it's also in the center of the city, uh, and it's to the right, it's called uh, the cell, it's like prison cell. Uh, the problem in the beginning of August, they didn't have enough, play, uh, enough space to detain all the people. Uh, so people were held, like 50 people in the six square meters cell in the prison and they couldn't actually sleep or lay down there. And the people, uh, they were, it was, I think, initiated by the artists, but also uh, other people and also uh, the former prisoners were invited to do so, uh, to stand there to show how many people it is and what sort of space it is. Because when you read online, that it's been like 50 people in the six square meter or something. You cannot actually imagine it because it's not something which usually, it's not something usually happens. And here they gather just to make this illustration. Thank you. Uh, how, how would it look? So, and that's quite, uh, I would say that's quite a moving thing to, de to depict all their crimes. And, mm -hmm. Let's move. Uh, another thing uh, the art expressions do now, uh, what everything I'm showing now in this part of the presentation, those are their uh, images uh, or actions which happened uh, or been created uh, in the previous two months. So all of them are quite fresh. And uh, and what's, uh, what's unique about them, what was not happening before, uh, that they're going viral when some sort of uh, image is created, uh, created and it's connected to the revolutionary topic. Uh, it's very, uh, very rapidly, it's being, uh, it's being reproduced everywhere. It's printed out, but not by the artists uh, themselves, but also uh, by the people who are moved by these images. And people are doing reposts, and so more and more people are started to be involved in this artistic uh, artistic movement, let's say so. And another uh, thing which happens, that's uh, basically not only blaming the right police for what they've done, but also dehumanizing them. Because so uh, we can talk about some sort of uh, human rights and, uh, and to being kind to all the people, but uh, it wouldn't actually be directly connected to the right police when we talk about this. And in the art where uh, people are trying to show that those who are doing this, they're not fully people. So uh, I would say that it's not like a good thing to do or a bad thing to do. It's mostly like, a, a, like in all sort of propaganda and when we're talking about art activism, it's also some sort of propaganda. We need to dehumanize the cultural other so people can defeat them basically and that's what's uh, happening so they're presented as animals as some sort of like bad energy or even trash uh, trash bags because it looks like also like a belly club you can uh, see it on the screen uh and perhaps the next one and also the performances and also you see like what happens when we take take off the helmet and we can talk, uh, take off the pellet level, like no one is there. It's also about this, like they're not fully human, it's the role they're doing and uh, this role shouldn't be done. And another thing for another performance, uh, which also happened uh, during one of the Sunday marches, and you perhaps know that we're having them uh, every Sunday, or as we say, every day, every day, but the biggest one is each Sunday, like the big ones around Sundays. Uh, and that's the play of words, because right, police in Belarus is called Amon. It's basically like a uh, so basically a pol police troop of a special, special purpose. And uh, also it's uh, very similar to the word Hamon, which is basically what you have from Ham in Spain. And that was also like, there are not people there basically. So a group of people was marching in the uh, pig masks and dressed in all black and the logo of one was uh, instead of it, it was written Havon. And also you can see there is like a head of Lukashenko, which was perhaps uh, sort of uh, 
uh, being their leader, which he is. We, uh, uh, people joke that uh, Lukashenko now is not the president of people, but the president of this right police, because only they are truly loyal to them, which is perhaps was, uh, I would read it as also, I mean, when I say perhaps, I mean that uh, I would read it, but it's not the official statement from the artistic group which was doing it. So it's, I would say that, uh, that their idea how to show that uh, not only they are not fully people, but also he is the leader only of this, uh, this big strong him. And let's move to the next slide, and which means the next function. function. And that's critical critique of the system. Uh, the upper thing. Uh, so what I mean by this uh, function of art in this uh, this year, this uh, in Belarus, uh, it's also to criticize uh, and this year to criticize it in a much uh, much more harsh way than it used to be usually uh, to show that people are. Mm, who are not involved in the police or in the military? They are also, uh, they are also, they also can be considered being responsible to the crimes which are happening now. And the problem with them is since they are not directly in this uh, violent uh, segment of the regime, uh, they have a tendency to say that what, but what I can do, and uh, perhaps you know that. Uh, the votes from the uh, on the election day are counted mostly by the teachers in schools, and they are manipulated to count how how the government tells them. So it's not like a fair elections, and it's uh, falsified on the level. So basically, uh, the teachers do it, and that's the first or other people who work in uh, the governmental systems. Uh, for example, the libraries, or, or sometimes there there are hospitals, I believe, or some sort of uh, uh, cultural centers in the villages and uh, the lower in the lower part it's like the portraits of these teachers who were in, taking part in the falsified elections but the artist and the gay Andro, he erased their faces to show that they pretend they don't have a responsibility for this but they do and that they basically put on so it's not like a black clever mask but it's also from hiding their faces and trying to say that they don't have this uh, responsibility for the people. And uh, the other one, which is in the uh, traditional national costumes, we have a, it's sort of like a, it's called Dajinki, and it's basically uh, a holiday of the harvest. And Lukashenko is one of his favorite, uh, favorite uh, celebrations of the year. And uh, that's a picture from, I think, last year, the Rinkis or something. And it's showing that people who are uh, taking part in something for which it can be considered by the general public as being not directly involved, involved with the politics and with the, with the protest, uh, but it still is integrated in the system which supports, uh, which supports uh, the violence. Uh, which is happening now, and of course it's more like a joking thing who are putting black lavas on these girls who are wearing masks, but also it's very critical that everything which is uh, supporting a regime in any way is basically uh, enforcing the violence and in helping the, the regime to uh, to continue, continue existing for another month or even years, I hope, hope not years at least. And so this sort of uh, facelessness in the system is one, uh, uh, one of the central points of discussions. And uh, it's a quite a broad movement uh, for the anonymization. Can we move to the next slide, please? Uh, for basically taking off the balaclavas. And it's not only metaphorically. Uh, so basically on the pictures to explain one is just like on the black one, perhaps you don't see it that good. Uh, the, just the hand taking off the balaclava. And on the other one, it's like, you know, this uh, uh, from the amusement parks when you have to drag out the toy and it's like to, for taking off the balaclava. And uh, the other one, it's uh, called the uh, completely transparent balaclava for the, uh, 
for the fair uh, for fair policemen and because uh, and it's basically a response to the practices of the anonymization because all the people who work in police now they don't wear any sort of dis uh, distinctions they don't uh, they don't have numbers, they don't have names, they wouldn't show you your documents, they would be in ballet gloves or at least in face masks saying it's COVID-19, that's why we're doing this. Obviously, they were not doing it uh, until the election started, so it's just an excuse for them because they initially didn't believe in it. And so they basically don't have a face, they don't have an identity. And as an activist, not artistic, but a purely activist, uh, the protest we, st we started is to de-anonymize the people who work with the system. Firstly, the riot police, and uh, their, this de is happening with the help of the people they know, and now since uh, there are people like cyber partisans uh, who are hacking the websites and the da databases, uh, so now there are also artificial intelligence is used. So basically now we have a list of, with addresses, phone numbers, and information about the families for uh, mostly all the people who are somehow involved uh, with the police or the army. And that's basically the most uh, oh, the most violent thing the protesters did because and uh, everything else is more about doing art, bringing flowers, showing how peaceful we are. And this de-anonymization, which is uh, mm, which is also very scary for them, because uh, now people also when they are detained, try to be detained, people are basically trying to drag off the black lever from. Them. And there is also a video when a guy, uh, a girl, I think, she took off almost took off the black lever from a guy, and the other uh, right policeman he just trans and tries to put it back for his uh, his friend that. that this de-anonymization, uh, it's the only thing they're actually afraid of at the moment because that means that they can actually be uh, punished for the crimes they did during this uh, two months already. Yeah, and I think the next one, and the next practice we do with the art, it's just like a few examples, there are lots and lots of it just for the illustration. It's uh, finding the hero and the heroization of uh, people. Of course, there is some sort of uh, uh, portraits and vernacular memorials for the people who've been murdered during the pr protests, uh, but they're not that popular, I would say. And what goes completely viral, it's uh, now the images of Maria Kolesnikova, one of the faces of the opposition, let's say so, but we're not the opposition, because the opposition means that you're sort of the minority, or <laughs> people in the protest are not the minority. Uh, she's one of these, uh, uh this uh, perhaps you know that before their elections the three uh 